We are going to cover chapter two in your digital radiography and PACS book. Um, the chapter is digital imaging characteristics. So there are several objectives that you will need to be able to answer in order to be successful. There are some key terms that you should be able to define. Just a few of them. So when we look at analog versus digital images, um, we're going to talk about the difference between the analog and the digital image. So in medical imaging, Two types. The analog refers to the device or system that captures or measures a continuous changing dial, whereas digital records as multiple numeric values and are divided into an array of small elements that can be processed in many different ways. So with analog, um, a signal wave is recorded or is used in its original form. So a typical analog device such as a watch um, in which hands move continuously around the face is capable of indicating every possible time of the day. So in contrast, whereas a digital clock is capable of representing only a few um, finite numbers, so every tenth of a second or so for an example. So you can see with the analog, with the second hand, you're measuring every um, possible moment of time throughout the day where this is just giving you every 60 seconds. So a digital image begins as an analog signal. So through computer data processing, the image becomes digitized and is uh, sampled multiple times. The critical characteristics of a digital image, um, you'll need to know these. They're critical characteristics. I have it in bold, are spatial resolution, contrast resolution, noise, and dose efficiency So um, of the receptor. So when we talk about the pixel, it's a picture element. So it's the smallest element in a digital image. If you ever ever multiplied, if you take your image in, in clinic and you mag it up really big, you're going to see all these squares. So each of these squares um, is a pixel. So that is your picture element. Spatially, the digital image is separated into pixels with discrete whole numbers only. Uh, so the pixel size um, of the uh, the size of the pixel is directly related to the spatial resolution of the image. So the smaller the pixel, the higher the spatial resolution. The pixel size will change with the size of the matrix or the field of view. So that's important to know. The process of associating the pixels with discrete uh, values defines maximum contrast resolution. So when we talk about bit depth, so it's the number of bits or pieces of information within each pixel. If a bit if a pixel has a bit depth of 8, then the number of gray tones that the pixel can produce is 2 to the power of the bit depth, or 2 to the 8th power. So if you do 2 to the 8th power, it's 256 shades of gray. So the bit depth range for most digital systems between 10 and 16, or 2 to the 10th to the 12th to the 16th shades of gray, so 1024 to 65, 536. So that's the normal uh, for the digital systems. Each pixel can have a gray level between 1 or 2 to the 0 and 65,536 or 2 to the 16th. So the gray level is a factor in determining the image contrast resolution. So when we look here, so we talk about pixel depth, so the bits per pixel. So here's 1, 4, 8, so 1 is just a 2, so here the 4 is 16 and the 8 is 256. So if we were to take that out even further, we could keep it going, we'd have more shades of gray. So you can see here we have basically two shades, black and white. Now we have 16 shades of gray, now we have 256 shades of gray. So the matrix, it's a square arrangement of numbers in rows and columns. In digital imaging, these numbers correspond to discrete pixel values. So each box within the matrix corresponds to a specific location in the image, a specific area of the patient's tissue. The image is digitized by both position, so the spatial location, and by the intensity, so the shade of gray. The typical number of pixels in a matrix range from 512 to 1024 and can be as large as 2,500 by 2,500. The size of the matrix determines the size of the pixels. For example, if you have a 10 by 12 and a 14 by 17 uh, CR cassette and both have a 512 matrix, 
then the five, the one um, that is 10 by 12 will have smaller pixels. So for a given field of view, larger the, the matrix size, the greater the number of smaller individual pixels. So increasing the number of smaller pixels will improve the quality of the image. So here, um, if we look at A, as you can see here, um, it's a 64 by 64, where if we go to B, it's a 215 by 215. So you see a lot of pixels. You see some pixeling, but not too bad. And when you go to C, we're at a 1024 by 1024, so that's pretty good. And then we have a 2048 by 2048, so that's even better. So um, as you can see, if um, we change the matrix size, um, we definitely change the resolution of the image by the pixels. So matrix size. Here's a small and a large matrix size. So as you can see, this would be higher resolution than this one would be. So with field of view, the term field of view is synonymous <laughs> with x-ray field. So it is the amount of body part or patient included in the image. The larger the field of view, the more area is imaged. So changes in field of view do not affect the size of the matrix. So changing in matrix affects the pixel size. As I know, it gets confusing. So um, the field of view does not change the size of the matrix. The matrix changes the pixel size, okay? As the matrix increases and the field in view remains the same, the pixel size must decrease to fit the matrix. So from 512 to 1024. So if we look here, um, here's the large field of view with large pixels and here's a small image uh, with small pixels. So the relationship may exist between the size of the pixel the size of the matrix and the field of view. So matrix size can be changed without affecting the field of view. The field of view can be changed without affecting the matrix. A change in either the matrix or the field of view will change the size of the pixels. So what this means, so translation, this is in theory, does not apply to DELs. So remember we talked about the DELs of the imaging system. Um, this is more with the monitor, okay? With the change of the matrix, the pixels, um, uh, will get bigger or smaller with the change of the field of view to keep the resolution the pixel size will change to remain consistent so read the chapter it helps explain that really well I think <laughs> to me it made sense all right exposure indicators so it refers to the amount of exposure received by the image receptor not by the patient so knowing the exposure factor imp impacts the exposure index um, is key to learning to provide enough exposure to the receptor while limiting exposure to the patient. So manufacturers differ in ways that they represent this, so it's really hard to figure out which way you're going to go, if it's up or down. The clinical world has been calling for exposure indicators standardization for years, and um, I don't know if it's going to happen. So, in 2008, the International Electrical um, Technical Commission established a report, Medical Electrical Equipment Exposure Index of Digital X-ray Imaging Systems, so Part 1, uh, Definitions and Requirements for General Radiography. And then in 2009, the American Association of Physicists and Medicine released a report titled, An Exposure Indicator in Digital Radiography. So, um, the AAPM report expressed the need um, clinically to have the standardized, saying it will give the technologist more confidence in adjusting technical factors while following the LARA principle. So that's absolutely true. So when we look at um, the exposure indicators for digital radiography, so the recommendations are established, uh, establish an indicator of the X-ray incident on x-ray beam incident on the digital detector measured in air karma so or micrograys uh, so it's indicated equivalent air comma so the kind uh, display the difference between kind and the established target value for the body part target equivalent air comma value so and then display a graphic overlay on the image to show each pixels were used to determine the the K indicated. So 
provide an appropriate analytical tools for following post-processing uh, image data, so the Q values or exposure values normalized to the standard beam conditions, so the QK, to be displayed and analyzed on the system console to provide the ability for access for processing pixel values. So Air Karma, what is this? So Air Karma is the kinetic energy released per unit of mass of air is the measurement of radiation energy, so the joules or the J, absorbed in a unit of air, so kg. Therefore, the quant quantity karma is expressed as joules per kilograms or grays. The gray is used most often in equipment to express this measurement. Um, when the exposure is made of an IR, the air karma can easily read during the processing of the exposure. So the standardization radiation exposure, so the K-stand, which is the standard, is a standard exposure typical of that imaging receptor system. So it's the standard for that system. The exposure is made with additional filtration that hardens the beam to simulate the patient's tissues. These standard conditions for the exposure are used to ensure that the equipment is functioning properly. So the indicated equivalent, Air Karma, is the measurement of the radiation that was incident on the image receptor for that particular exposure. The measurement is derived from the reading of the pixel values produced by the exposure of the image receptor. So um, values are known as for, for processing pixel values, so with the Q. The median is found after each data correction has taken place and the median value is then compared to the K standard exposure to the derived, the KIND. So this may seem a bit complicated, but the uh, K indicator can be simply stated as the amount of exposure to the IR. Why did they just say that, right? This value will help you determine whether you are over or underexposed for the IR for that particular body part. So the target equivalent air karma value is set is a set of values that have been established by either the system manufacturer or by the system user that represents the optimal exposure for each specific body part. For example, there are established perfect exposures for PA, lateral, and a portable chest along with pediatric and so on. So each body part has a view and its own unique optimal exposure. These exposures are listed in a table by body part and by view. So you can see the B and the V. So you take your K target times your B and your V. So uh, deviation index, so the, your DI numbers, those of you guys that have those, is simply the difference between the actual exposure, so the K, I, and K indicator and the target exposure. So expressed in a log, logarithmic fashion, the indicator is intended to help technologists determine whether an image has been under or overexposed. The technologist must evaluate images, and if they are uh, unsure of its quality, they should consult a radiologist. So radiologists have a higher quality monitors, as we talked about, and they be able to see if the image is properly exposed. So the deviation index can be used to adjust technical factors if the image is not repeated. So a perfect image indicating or according to the DI, has a DI value of zero. If the DI is negative, the image is underexposed. To raise the DI uh, plus one, increase by 20%. If the DI is positive, the image has been overexposed. To decrease the DI negative one, decrease the technique by 25%. This plus or negative changes in the K indicator by plus 25 or negative 20. So if you go plus one is approximately 125 percent of the attended, attended, intended exposure where if you go negative one it's 80 percent of the intended exposure so uh, several variances uh, could cause the reading of the pixels to be off so a prosthetic within the image gonadal shielding within an image failure of the system to recognize a collimated border and an unexpected body part within the image so uh, will cause the DI to fluctuate, and the technologist should consult with the radiologist regarding the above variances. The technologist should continue to use the image noise as the true detector determining factor if it is acceptable. These standards values should only be based as a guide. So 
I'm going to stop here and we're going to pick up here with the next lecture. Thank you.